So you've done some simplifying of things before. One of the things that you've simplified are fractions. So for instance, if we had this fraction right here, you would have realized, hey, I could divide the numerator and the denominator both by 2 to write this as, or start with this and realize that the numerator is 2, the denominator is 2 times 3, because 6 is 2 times 3, and these are factors, common factors in the numerator and the denominator, and 2 divided by 2 would be 1 over 1 times 3, which is 3. So you, you know that when we are when we have a factor divided by a factor, we can mul we can cancel those things out. But we can only cancel things that are products. So this is a common mistake that students make. If there's a plus sign, you can't cancel these twos out. You can't cancel sums. So if there's a plus or minus sign separating the two terms, you cannot cancel that out. That would be wrong. But when it's a product, when the terms are separated by a time sign, that will simplify to one-third. Say we had an expression like this. Well, you know that we could say, well, if there's 5x's here and, and 7x's down here, we could divide the numerator and denominator by x to the power of 5 and that would leave us with 1 over x squared. Because really, x to the power of 5 is 5x's, and x to the power of 7 is the product of 7x's. And each of these x's would cancel out, leaving 1 over x squared. So really what this is then is a rational expression. We have a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. And we're going to simplify this rational expression. Well, if I look at my coefficients 5 and 3, I can't actually reduce that fraction. However, x squared divided by x would become 5x over 3. Because x squared divided by x would just be x. Now, this is where it's important that we talk about the non-permissible values. So if we go back to the original expression, 5x squared over 3x, we can see that the non-permissible value in the original expression was 0. Because if we put 0 in for x here, we would be dividing by 0, and we can't do that. But take a look at the new expression that we've simplified. In this case here, if we put 0 in for x, we wouldn't be dividing by 0 anymore, and so the appearance would be that this would be a valid expression when x is, when x is 0. So that's why the non-permissible values are important to identify, because when we simplify the expression, often the non-permissible values will, will be permissible in the expression, but we, we always want to refer back to the original. So we would say that the expression 5x squared over 3x is going to give you the exact same answer as if you simplified it to the 5x divided by 3. But we need to remind people that you can't actually use 0 because that was a non-permissible value in the original question. Here's another example. 3x minus 6 divided by x minus 2. So I can see that my non-permissible value right at the beginning is going to be x cannot equal 2, because 2 minus 2 would be 0 in the denominator. But now let's say I want to simplify this expression. Well, again, you can't cancel parts of sum, so I can't cancel this x with this x, because there's a minus sign following that term. So the first thing I need to do is I need to factor this expression. So in my numerator, there's a common factor of 3, so I'm going to take that out. That would leave me with 3 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. And so now I see these are actually common factors here. 3 times this divided by this. The x minus 2's would cancel out. And this complicated expression here is really just a fancy way of writing 3. Because this expression simplifies to 3. And that'll do that every time except 
x cannot equal 2. So in this original expression, if I put a number in for x, and I put it in here and here, and I work this divided by this, it'll always give me 3. But when x was 2, this didn't work, because we would get technically 0 over 0, and that, that's undefined. That doesn't work. So we would say this expression simplifies to 3, where x does not equal 2. So in this example here, let's say we have to find all the non-permissible values, and let's say we need to also simplify this expression. So simplify and identify non-permissible values. So in order to find the non-permissible values, I would need to find out where the denominator is 0. And in order to do that, I need to factor this expression. So I'm going to factor both the numerator and denominator at the same time, because I need to do that to simplify as well. So I see a common factor of 2 here, and I'm going to pull the 2 out, which for now leaves x squared minus 4. In the denominator, I see this is a trinomial, so I need two numbers that multiply to minus 6 and add to, this is like a minus 1 here, so that would be negative 3 and positive 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So this would be x minus 3, x plus 2. And in the numerator, I can still factor the x squared minus 4. That's a difference of squares. So x times x is x squared, and 2 times 2 is 4, and 1 bracket plus, 1 bracket minus. And so here I can see in my original question, I factored it to x minus 3, x plus 2. I can see here that x cannot equal 3 because 3 minus 3 would be 0, and here x could not equal minus 2, because x plus, uh, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And now that I have my numerator factored and my denominator factored, I'm going to look for a common factor here, and I see that x plus 2's would cancel out. And so my simplified expression becomes 2 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 3. This expression here will always give you the same answer as this expression that we started with, but it won't work for 3 or negative 2. So we'll say 2x squared minus 8 divided by x squared minus x minus 6 is exactly the same as 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 3 except for the values 3 and minus 2, because they were the ones that didn't work in the original expression. And you can see here that in our simplified expression, it's obvious that 3 is not going to work, because 3 minus 3 would be 0, but it's not obvious that negative 2 will work, because we ended up cancelling that factor out when we simplified. So let's review how we would simplify rational expressions. So to simplify rational expressions, the first thing that you want to do is you want to factor the numerator and denominator. So in this expression, the, the numerator would factor to 2 times x minus 3, and the denominator would factor to x minus 3, x plus 3. So factor the numerator and denominator. Step 2 then would be to determine the non-permissible values from the original expression. So this was my original expression in the factored form. So I can see here that x cannot equal 3 or x cannot equal minus 3, 3 and minus 3. And instead of writing 3 and minus 3, it's a shortcut way is to just do this. x cannot equal plus minus 3. So those are the non-permissible values. Always use the original expression. And once you have it factored, the original expression is factored, now you'd cancel any common factors that were in the numerator and denominator. So this would be a common factor, the x minus 3s they would cancel out, and we'd have 2 over x plus 3 as our simplified expression, where x cannot equal plus or minus 3. We'll look at uh, one or two more examples here. Here we need to simplify and identify non-permissible values. So the first thing we want to do is we'd factor, but in this first example here we don't have anything to factor because it already is factored. So just looking at my denominator, what values for the variables are going to make it equal 0? 
Well, it's simply 10 times x times y to the 7, so x cannot equal 0, and y cannot equal 0, because any of those values will make the denominator 0. So here's the non-permissibles. Now I need to simplify the expression. So 5 tenths would reduce to 1 half, divide by 5, divide by 5. Here I have an x squared in the numerator and 1x in the denominator, so that would leave 1x left in the numerator. And here we have 4y's in the numerator and 7y's in the denominator, which would end up being, when we cancelled 4y's out of here and 4y's out of here, there'd still be 3y's in the denominator. So 1 times x is x, 2 times y cubed is 2y cubed, but x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. In this next example, um, we've got 27 minus 3x squared over 6x squared minus 6x minus 36. This is going to have the little negative 1 trick in it, in this question. So we'll watch for a little trick in this one. So here, let's factor it. That would be our first step because it definitely needs some factoring. There's a common factor of 3 in the numerator, so I'm going to factor out a 3. That would leave 9 minus x squared. And in the denominator, there's a common factor of 6. That's going to leave x squared minus x minus 6. And uh, the numerator now has a difference of squares in it. So the square root of 9 is 3. I put that there and there. And the square root of x squared is x here and here. One bracket plus, one bracket minus over 6. Now this is a trinomial, so I need something that multiplies to minus 6 and adds to minus 1, which is minus 3 and 2. So this would be x minus 3 over x plus 2. So here we are in fully factored form. So now I can identify my non-permissible values. 6 is a constant. Here x would could not be 3 because 3 minus 3 makes a value of 0, and x can also not equal minus 2, because that would make this factor 0. Here we are, we've factored it, we've identified our non-permissible values, and now we're at the point of um, cancelling our, our common factors. So 3 sixths, that reduces to 1 half. But now, looking at these factors here, nothing really seems to cancel out. We've, we've got a 3 plus x, there's no 3 plus x down here. We've got a 3 minus x, there's no 3 minus x down here. And there's an x plus 2, and nothing's the same here. But if you look at these two here, the 3 minus x and the x minus 3, here's where the little negative 1 trick is going to come into play. So I'm just going to put these two terms out on the side. They're actually exactly the same, except their signs are opposite. So this is a positive 3, this is a negative 3. This is a negative x, this is a positive x. So if the terms are identical, except for their sign, what you can do is you can factor a negative 1. This is a little negative 1 trick. If I take a negative 1 and factor it out of this expression here, this would make this a positive x, and that would make that a negative 3. So taking a negative 1 out will, in effect, change the signs of each of those terms. And now these factors are exactly the same. The x minus 3 is still x minus 3 in the denominator. The negative 1 that we factored out is still the same as this one because negative 1 times x is negative x and negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So anytime you have two terms and they're exactly the same except their signs are opposite, factor a negative 1 out and that'll allow you to change the sign so that it matches the one uh, in this case in the denominator. So I'm going to factor that negative 1 out. I'm just going to put it in front of the, th the uh, expression here. So it was a negative 3, but negative 3, 6 is negative 1 half. And then, after I've taken the negative 1 out, I can say this is a positive x and a negative 3. And now, these factors will cancel out. So we'd have negative 1 times 3 plus x. We don't need to write the 1. 
So negative 3 plus x divided by 2x plus 2 would be our, our uh, simplified expression. And we would remind people that you can't use 3 or minus 2 in this expression.